All right, we're here on the new episode of Trash Can Talk. Thank you all for following, liking, subscribe. We got about 800 new subscribers on YouTube, and that's in the last couple months. And um, we really appreciate if you just, you know, hit the like button. Like I said, subscribe, throw a comment down below. Um, we have an awesome artist who's also my CPA. <laughs> and uh, good. his name's Crew. Crew sound waves. If you want to look them up right now, throw a tune on. Um, yeah. So, um, can you tell us a little about your journey in music? How you got started? Oh man, shoot! What a what a journey. Let me say, like, all right, in my over two decades of life, right, I'm not gonna tell you how old I am, man. It's been it's been a uh, it's been such an up and downward kind of thing with with me as an artist. I started out making music. Um, in school, man, I started out in 2016. My first show was at like my fraternity house. It's crazy. Uh, perhaps one of my biggest shows, man. It was it was insane. Um, Where was that at? It was in Orlando, Florida, at University of Central Florida, man. I forgot nice. what's the name of this artist. I forgot the artist. So it was a really big idiom artist at the time that we brought into as a fraternity. And then you know, I took it upon myself to squeeze myself on the on the show because hey, you know. We're we're bringing this guy out, and you know I'm 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 an artist now, so um, I was like, yo, look, let me let me hop on this set, man. What did you do? Huge. Just have him throw a song on, or no, nah, man, a set? no. So so it was a set. It was a so there was another artist um, that was making music in the fraternity as well, and then you know I kind of started making music later on. Um, I started making music with and shout out Mike to Don, man, my homie from back home, Tampa, Florida. Man, he really kind of ushered me into the sound of of just music and just going in and making records. And Dre Moon as well, who's huge producer right now. Really? Working with um, Boominati right now. Um, shout out Metro. It's going crazy, man. But um, that was kind of like my first kind of intro into music was, you know, in college. And just kind of seeing like, yo, this is not it for me. You know right. what I mean? Like as I was going through school and doing the internships and just going through life, it was like, yo, um, I'm kind of getting a sneak peek of what this shit could be. Like it's cool and everything, but I always felt like there's more to me than you know just a standard career route. You right. know, you, you you get a you get a degree, you go to school, you get a degree, and then you get into a job. Like for me, like I'm so adventurous, dude. Like I, I was kind of foreseeing that. I'm like, nah. Like, and, and I always had a passion for music. I started writing poetry when I was young, and so like I always would have like rhymes in my mind and shit. Like I was known for just freestyling all the time when I was right. in high, when I was in high school and stuff. So that was kind of my thing. But then like, what musical influences did you have from like the early on? I mean, man, uh, my my influences a lot was like heavy on like Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne was a big influence for me and like before that was like G Young Jeezy and like Gucci Mane like right. and then but in a weird way I don't know like where I started kind of tap into music was when I really caught on to John Legend. Yeah like my mom got had a CD a John Legend right. CD I think it was the project was called like As I Am and for some reason dude like that's the one like, that got you? That's the one I was like, damn, this was so hard. Like, you know, he had records like, save a little for me, save a little bit. It was like crazy. Yeah. It was like, yo, like, um, and I would kind of sing the records too. And I was like, damn, I really like this. Like, I wonder what it'd be if I was an artist. But like going through life and going through school and shit, it kind of went away. Because I played a lot of basketball in high school. My whole thing was, yo, I'm, I'm about to go to the league. And stuff. Right. You know, but, um, you know, life happens and I didn't take that route. But I always had a passion for something that I cared about. What stopped you from the from that, dude? Is it um, hard? What stopped? I mean, what stopped me was all right. So, first off, I always imagined that I would be in a D one, one of the largest schools. But I wasn't getting those offers, man, in high school. Right. And so I was getting like a lot of D twos, man. A lot of um, private colleges were giving me offers. I was a point guard at the time, but then like. Um, I also had good grades, you think, right. because you have to have, you know, a base of, you know, good, average grades at least to stay on the team. So I was always like, yo, I'm, I'm afraid of getting kicked off. Right. So I would go crazy. And like, I would make sure that, you know, I was acing all that shit. So I always knew, like, by the time I graduated, I was getting letters from, like, D1 colleges. 
but it wasn't for basketball. <laughs> it was like for grades. Yeah, it was like, hey, wow. come to our school. Like I would, I would look forward to like letters in the mail every time I would come home. It was like UCF, like FSU, UF, like um, I think, I think like NYU. A lot, a lot of the, a lot of huge colleges, man, were just sending me mail. Did those all have? basketball teams like they had basketball teams but what they were offering to me was like scholarships right they had like new programs out they're like hey we'll cover your uh you know your education if you go here and and take this um you know take this stem program or some shit like that. wow so no basketball on the table yeah man i was like you know what dude I, i'm an adventurous person and like a lot of the d2 didn't just didn't they didn't look fun it didn't sound appealing so i was like you know what this is what i'm gonna do I'm going to go to UCF, and then I'm going to try out. Yeah. <laughs> right? So I'm like, all right, I had that plan. So I kind of kept that mentality. I, I continued to train, continued to do my thing, and then um, I started working, man, because you, you got to get money in college, bro. You yeah. got to pay for shit. So um, that really threw me off a lot because I was so focused on making sure that I had enough money for just living expenses while I was going to school. Partying when, or just living? Partying, too, man. Like, I, I, I wanted that social life, too, because, right. like, I'm all, I was I was, I grew up on camaraderie. I mean, I grew up yeah. around. I got six brothers and one sister, but I grew up with four other brothers, and I was the youngest. So it's like camaraderie is a normal thing for me. Right. So I, I always yearned that when I got to the, when I got to college. I was like, nah, I, I got to uh, <laughs> I got to get social. I can't like I can't just be going to class, going to work, and going home. It was like, nah. Then why am I even here if I not if I'm not trying to build my social life too? Did basketball then not play any part of that at all? Or man, listen, it didn't, huh? Bro, it did not at all, dude. Like, but I continued to ball, though. I continued to train, and like, that's when I met the fraternity. <laughs> right. After that, it was a wrap. <laughs> Shout out Kappa Sig, bro. Yo, were they like supportive of you doing music in the fraternity? Dude, yes, man. They're they college is great. They're a super People supportive. People underestimate it. Here's the weird thing about it, dude. Yeah. All right, so the fraternity that I joined it was Kappa Sigma, right? Right. right. It was a predominantly white fraternity. Right. So I was like one of like three black kids in there. And, I, and at first when I got in there, I was like conforming. I was like, yo, I was dressing like a frat boy. I was wearing the Sperry's and the polo shirts. I had short hair. The Sperry top siders? Top siders, bro. No socks. Dang. <laughs> the Ralph Lauren polo tees, like in every color. They got you. Yeah, they got me, bro. But like coming from where I came from, I was I, I was always creative. I was always artistic. I loved to dress up. But when I got to school, shit started changing. And then that's when it, like three years in the fraternity and I, first off, I love the, the frat rows, man. Right. They, they really helped me through a lot of classes, through a lot of shit in my life, financially and academically too. But I started to see like, yo, I feel like I can have a bigger impact if I just be myself. Right. And so that's when I started to kind of look around and be like, yo, this school shit is, 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 is cool, but like it's a deeper thing to it. It's about like, how can I express my individuality and bring it to the table. Show you guys something different. Yeah. Rather than show you guys the same thing. And so, right. you know, I just I just tapped back into myself, bro. And that was music and that was art. And that was just like just being a being a cool person, bro. Now at this point though, did you ever get the feeling of like at school, people go to school to like be good at school? Did you ever feel that at college? When I went to college, I'm like, people are here to do good at college. Yeah, and they're man. not really thinking of this like bigger picture that like, you know, you're like, I go to college because I want to expand my mind to be more impactful to the people around me. That's why I went. Right. But it's, I got it's the this application. Yeah. It's like, how are you going to apply it? Like, but granted, like when you're young and you get into that environment, like you don't really you're not really thinking about just you're not thinking that far. You're thinking about, damn, I got to ace this shit. Yeah. Like, so then you get caught in that mentality of I got to do good. All and the then, time. The, and then I bet you anything too, like the frat kind of, because that's like a oh, bro, that was a monster in itself. Like yeah, you got to like level up in that too, huh? Bro, you got to there, there's you gotta get your game up, bro. You got to like you got to get your social game up. There's bro. higher p levels in frats, right? Yes, bro. like the president and the president, top guys or how treasure, like people that handle the money. People. What about people that are like? in it longer than you do they have a higher position in it um sometimes yes and no like no okay it's all about like how you apply yourself because a lot of people would join and they would just do it just to like get girls or like meet sorority girls and stuff like that oh yeah for sure and they just end up burning out like they just end up just kind of smoking weed and shit not going to the events 
like going going out to drink but then when it's time to like do community service they're not there and shit like, right so um, then in year three this is you so you made the decision to turn it up man year three i was like bro i had to remind myself who I why was. i'm here like i'm from who tampa. I am. i'm from tampa florida right. bro like first generation student you know what i mean and 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 grew up in a single mom home like yo let me let me come back to earth like let me be more myself and is year three is this when that when you did that the show year three was like going into my senior year so basically the transition from year three to year four was when i was like yo i'm gonna do this music shit for real right and that's when my homie mike the don from tampa florida that's when i started having him come to orlando to produce and engineer for me and we were just like two kids trying to make this shit work we just loved it so much right and it just you know we just stuck with it i mean you know it's and it's growing it's it's building up I've, I've learned so much about myself through like tapping into just me bro and music and how would you describe your musical style to someone who's never heard it bro like i would describe my style my musical style like the way i dress okay right so you know, one day I might wear some sweats, right? Very uh, top. <laughs> nah, those are over, dog. Like those. So did the sound switch from back then to now? Yeah, um, definitely switched, man. Uh, but I still have that. Like, so my beginning sound is more like melodies, right? More like melodic, more like I was super into Travis Scott and Post Malone. Like White Iverson was the last straw. Like, nah, I could make a fucking record like that. When I heard White Iverson, right. I was so inspired. So it was more melodies and more, more. At the time when Travis was kind of making those kind of wavy type songs, that's what really caught my ear. And I was kind of approaching the game like that, which I still do, but it's a little bit different now. It's a little bit more calculated. Right. Yeah. And like when you approach the songwriting process, do you have like your routine or is it spontaneous? Man, dude, I have no process and no I don't process. want a process. Like I, I take what works in the moment. Yeah, I have no process. Either. You know what I mean? I take what works in that moment. Like I may book a studio session and not write anything, not even choose yeah. a beat, then go. Once I get there, we're going to figure it out there. Or I might go, I might write half the song and then leave the other half open for whatever comes to mind. Or I just might write the entire song and then build a beat around the song. I just don't like the process. I don't like to, you know, kind of put a cage around the process or the beginning stages. Do you get mad when you jump in with engineers and producers and they're like, wait, no, 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 I have a process. Bro, but see, nah, I don't. You don't? I don't. You fuck with that? I, I, I fuck with anyone's like, right. if, if you take it serious, I'm going to find that middle ground. I'm going to figure yeah. out a way for us to create. Yeah. I'm not going to allow, you know, your outlook on things and, and my outlook to collide. We're going to figure some shit out because it's that important to me. You think so far the biggest challenge you faced in your career is, is finding your authentic self in year three, or has there been bigger? Yeah, the, I mean, not. I would say continuing to evolve is the biggest challenge. Like continuing to to dig deeper into like my sound, who I am, like where I'm trying to take it, but also also rem reminding myself that none of this shit matters. <laughs> right. <laughs> like having that balance of just like none of this shit matters, but like. I'm human and I like to make music and I take it serious. Yeah. You know? Um, and like outside of music, what are some of your passions or interests that like would Dude. surprise someone that that's only heard your music? <laughs> well, a lot of people don't know, but some 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 people do know, but majority of people don't know. But I'm a licensed tax tax professional, right? Right. I know. And 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 an accountant and bookkeeper. So Brandon is one of my clients as well. That's how I got to know Brandon. So check them out. Listen, if I can you stop and say something, in. get you a trade right now and, you know, diversify your life. But hit me up if you need some taxes. Right. <laughs> yeah, man. So I, I would say, you know, my, my, my life is strictly geared to funnel and fuel music. Right. So if I have to learn something new outside of music, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Uh, uh, Rick Rubin says that, like, he always says that um, there's there's nothing wrong with having, like, a job and then having your passion. And he actually says that it might better. be even better, better to not bro. intertwine the thing. Because if your passion is what you rely bro. on to make money, then sometimes it robs the art. It creates, all right, so when you, when, when you try to mix, all right, so the grand scheme of things, right, eventually 
when it, when when you put so much time into music, right, it takes so much time that you you start to want something back. Yeah. But also keep it in mind that the goal is to definitely monetize it if that's if if that's kind of what your thing is. But then also understand like if you are mixing too early on, if you're if you're mixing like money and music too early on if you're trying to pull money out of the music too early on before it's growing as it's growing you're going to start getting frustrated yeah it's going to it's going to create desperation and then your creativity is going to get blocked i mean look at a lot of the 90s artists you know what i mean so what happened is they're like we're going to give you five million dollars and we're going to sign you and so people are just right there like awesome let's sign yeah but after you sign that five million dollars will create five albums. You'll do one a year, and, yeah. So and so it, that money that we give you actually will go into the album. That one million, and there's five of you because you're tough. a band. They, I mean, when people talk about like what, like it's not that the audience was bored of rock and roll. It, it was that the fucking record label sucked the blood. They the sucked them dry. Out, man. It takes the energy out. It's a yeah. give and take, man. It's a give and take. And so now, it. too, you look at these people who like, oh, we really do want to play with like these live... Who doesn't? You know what I mean? Yeah. It'd be awesome to always have a live band. Yeah. But sometimes you have to sit in the room with the fucking computer, make the beats, you know yeah. what I mean? Because yeah. you're not going to be able to like support this you know but, I mean? it, but it just has to be intrinsic, though. Like it, uh, okay. Granted, yes, you want to, you want to get out for five M's, and you know, granted, the situation is good. But then also, your intrinsic motivation has to be bigger than any source of money. But don't forget, then, if you take that five M's, you got to tour these albums, right? You know what I mean? Right. And like I said, if you're doing a five album deal and you then you tour every album for one year, that means in ten years the five albums will be completed. And that $5 million will be for 10 years. You got to love it, man. You got to love it. Right. But some of these. But, but that's some, why, dude, I'm saying yeah. like, listen, you're a CPA. You could, you're, there's no, there's no expiration date on the art. It can, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 it's like, it's like a, an infinite now. Yeah. You know what man. I mean? If you sign to a label, now you're like. I'm on their ass, like, yo, let me look at my books real quick. Let's see right. what y'all are doing. Well, you're, you're better <laughs> set up for, for signing you know. than. Than the person, um, but uh, how do you engage like with your fans right now, and uh, what role does your audience play in your career at this point? Man, um, to be to be real with you and completely transparent, um, you know, of course, social media is a big thing, but just in my everyday life, I look at the world and the people that I meet as my audience. So wherever I go, whether I'm filing taxes or doing or accounting or i'm going to the grocery store or i'm babysitting my niece or i'm making music i'm always crew sound waves right i'm crew when i wake up i'm crew when i go to sleep i'm crew the uncle crew the the nephew crew right. the tax guy <laughs> crew the artist like this is like this like all these different um i guess perspectives that i live I bring them together and it took me some time because it, it kind of when you first start making music and you have to you got to understand like yo you got to make a decision like if this is really what you want to do right and then you, you, you may go through some cognitive dissonance between um the person that just you know that has to go go to work in the morning versus the person that's in the studio right but you got to bring them together and know yeah. and and understand that just show up right. as whatever you want to be in life anywhere you go yeah and do it with honor and people people won't look at you like crazy you know right so i mean that's that's the thing too like me so i'm like brandon the job coach yeah the group facilitator but you're still, you're still but yeah you. it's just me showing up yeah you know, all the different things and uh and like i actually so i won't do things that i can't be me authentically yeah don't don't even go like yeah like, so that and that's another thing too where it's like you can kind of like you know what i mean like there's things like learning taxes and you know what I mean? Like yeah. there's things you learn that you incorporate to crew being the CPA. Yeah. And the yeah. same thing with me. It's like I when I went back to school, I mean, I picked up some certificates that helped, you know, Brandon. Help you or, as an or artist. Tra like trash can cut. This has been a thing. This has been a thing. So I've worked with people who've asked me, hey. You like are the face of this, and you have this program. Can you change your Instagram? 
Girl. And I'm like, no. Hell and nah. people ask me, can you, why don't you just make it Brandon O'Connell? And I'm like, because, well, Brandon O'Connell is the person on my ID card. You know what I mean? And uh, Trash Can Cut is like the people's. Like, th it's me as a collective It's from the ground up. It's like, it's you know his, what I mean? This is me, authentically yeah. me. It's, it's down to earth me. And I'm going to be Brandon Trash Can Cut. Whether I'm in the doctor's office or whether I'm on the podcast, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's important, you know. Yeah. So you have a new album coming out? Yeah, man. Yep, I do. I do. It's 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 called Enter the Zeitgeist. Nice. Um. So I I came up with the name Enter the Zeitgeist. Um. From a lot of it was based on you know Andre 3000 and his approach to I believe it was it's called the New Blue Sun. Right. And I watched an interview about like, you know, why did he just release him playing the flute, you know, or just why why was it such an instrumental, um, uh, focused album? And uh, something he said that kind of stuck out to me. He was like, you know, I really had nothing. I really have nothing to talk about. He's like, you have to be along. The, he says something along along the lines of, you have to be in the zeitgeist of, like, the time and zeitgeist. Um, the, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, the, the meaning is basically the spirit and energy of the current times, right? It's, it's, it's what's going on in the world. It's what, 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 what are the kids doing, right? What, what's going on on TikTok? What's going on in the Middle East, right? What's going yeah. on, you know, what, what's, your, what's your neighbor up to? So Andre DK is basically saying, I'm not on that anymore. But I'm here saying that, yo, I'm, I'm in that. Yeah. I'm not of it, but I'm in that, and and I have pride in where I'm at and and in this world that I'm in right now, and I'm going to, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna capture that in sound, and I don't care, like if you don't think it's like right. if you don't think it's nice or you or you don't think it's. Um, I loved that he did that. You know, and and I appreciate him for doing that because then it let me know that hey, like. I'm in a different time and I right. need to embrace that. Like he's embracing where he is. I need to embrace where I am. Is there any uh, new musical techniques or styles that you experimented with on that album or? Yeah, man. Cool. Um, one takes oh, wow. one or a few takes less than five takes. Some of them like just going in and not thinking too much. Right. That's, that's the biggest thing for me. And, um, and then uh, uh, another side of that is this is, uh, a f more along the lines of a feature, a feature project too. This is the most features I've ever released. Right. And some really heavy hitters, man. We got like Kiana, Nicole on there. She's doing crazy things right now. Um, we got Chris King. Shout out 1400, man. He's a legend, man, and and still active and 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 he's got skin in the game like crazy. We got Mikey Polo, um, another another member of 1400, man. Shout out Emo Gang. These guys are really like veterans and they really really put the time into it and um to be able to build that relationship with them i had to really put in that work too right and it's amazing that you know they're on this they're on this project and, and they're on um a project that has the most features i've ever released right so i'm excited man into the zeitgeist is basically like yo we're living in the matrix but hey i'm have i'm gonna i'm gonna rewrite the code and i'm gonna have fun in it right <laughs> Like I don't know if you've seen the uh, the last Matrix where where Trinity and Neo they like fly to like this the dude who designed like the the whole entire Matrix like they figured him out at the end of the movie they 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 jump back into the Matrix after they like destroy the shit right they fly back into it they damn near rip the entire building off just to enter the door like just to enter the living room and they and they basically sit him down and say yo and he's looking at them he's like what are y'all gonna do now. It was like, yo, they said, <laughs> we're going to have fun. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's, it's, Enter the Zeitgeist is basically a, 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 a deeper meaning for me. It's me saying, like, I know, like, I understand that, you know, that life, there's a lot, there's a lot of complexity to life and there's, there's deeper meanings and there's a lot of stuff going on and there's a lot of hidden messages and some things aren't right. Yeah. But there's also me saying, yo, I'm going to play my part by being authentic to the time that I'm in yeah. and showing people that you got to continue. You yeah. got to, you can't just give up because times are hard or times are, are difficult or you don't know what's going on or, or you feel like people are lying to you. Yo, we're in the, we're in the matrix. Have fun. Enter the zeitgeist. Man. Yeah. You know, 
So. Yeah, it's, I've had like an interesting like perspective on things that happen that I don't like or that I don't agree with. And it's been, I don't know if a lot of people agree with it, but like, I'm like, you know, my reaction towards things are like, I believe in, in a power greater than myself and that everything right. happens for a reason. Right. You know right. what I mean? So like, who am I to like react towards something without looking for the lesson in it? Right. You know what right. I mean? Exactly. And, yeah. And, and, and I always... It's super interesting, too, because, like, there's one thing I just didn't ever really understand about life, and it was that I am the only thing, the only thing in life I can change is myself. Come on, man. And the yeah. crazy thing is when I started to realize that, I felt like I cracked the code of the Matrix. You cracked the code, bro. You know what you I mean? Because I was like, oh, like, now it's just, like, how I react to everything. And then it's your experience is your world. Yeah. Your experience is your world. How you react is your, is, is your reality. Is there any like yeah. lead single that's coming off this album? Um, I'm I'm not sure. Like if, as far as lead single, meaning right. like I'm gonna release a record from the out al- from the I wouldn't even call it an album. I call it an EP right now. But um, there's not a single that I'm gonna release before it comes out. Right. Okay. But like, there's a record that I have with Kiana and Cody Benjamin, um, mm-hmm. and I'm naming it Unchained, and it's like, yo, the it 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 really kind of hits towards like us being in the, in the zeitgeist moment. Like uh, the beginning of the record, I won't say too much, but right. the first line is, I can't let the world chain me. When can we expect this record? May 1st, man, Enter the Zeitgeist is hitting all platforms, all stores, man. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be in your face, right. crazy. I, I don't want to give away too much, man, but I want y'all to tap in, man. Crew Soundways, the sound is amazing. Are you going on tour for this album? Yes, okay. I'm going on tour, man. We, we're, we've already been planning tour in June. Nice. So June's going to be a, the, the Zygeist takeover. The party never ends in the Matrix. How many times <laughs> have you gone on tour? Uh, say it again? How many times have you, done, have you toured right now? Uh, I wouldn't say. This is my first ever tour. Right. Um, I've jumped on shows of other people's tours. Right. But like in terms of, yo, we hitting the road. You know, we hitting these cities, um, you know, consecutively. This Are you is preparing for it right now? Yeah, yes, man. I've been really. I've just been locking in, man, mentally and financially, and creatively, just preparing. Cause it's, it takes a lot of energy to get on the road, man. I don't know. If, 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 yeah, no, I know. Yeah, if, when I was a little kid, I did it in the. I, I was in the punk bands, and we'd so get, know we'd jump in the fucking van. Come on, it's like I don't know what, yeah. I, dude. I don't know what I do at this point. Like I'm, I love sleeping in my bed, dude. I, you, you know, know that, what I mean? That's and, that's like what I. That's my preparation yeah. right now. Make make sure that you you, you make peace with that bed. Dude, you should you like leave. you should you should like you should like sleep outside in a tent for like a week and you know, see if you could. Bro, I, the craziest part about me even is, the hotels are hard on me, bro. And the way and the way, especially like four yo, days. I can't even believe. Like I was homeless. Bro, it's Living crazy. under a bridge, but like, I always tell Chelsea, like, we go to like a hotel, and I'm like, dude, this bed is not. Yeah, because you came a long way, right? You know you know what what I mean? I was like, I don't know about this bed. It's like, but see, I'm entering the zeitgeist, right? Because I, right. I, I know, like, I can go, I can go, I can stay yeah. home under, you know, my under oh, a yeah. roof, uh, amazing air condition. I don't have to go anywhere. I could just do accounting all day, right? <laughs> yeah. But I'm entering the zeitgeist because this is this is me right now in this world and. I like to make music and I and I like to make it any way that I want and I'm influenced by a whole bunch of shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like I'm 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 getting on the road. The party never ends in the Matrix. The name of the tour is The Party Never Ends. You know what I'm saying? So So what do they what can we expect like on stage? Is there you know what I mean? Like is it a... Um you can definitely expect um real sound, man. And, right. and I've I've been working on my vocals and and in a uh, stage presence yeah that's big see like that's the thing you know? so i've worked with a lot of artists you know what i mean and and uh and i i'm not gonna say that you should do this but what i've realized is if you haven't got like if you if you aren't consistently playing live shows before going on tour i would highly suggest i don't know if they still have it like amp rehearsal Rehearse, of like, rehearse, rehearse your sets, yeah. The man. sets, dude. And then this is something I always tell people. And this guy that I used to work with didn't get this, but I was like, listen, get on the fucking treadmill, treadmill, Bro, run full huge. fucking speed as long as you can. Imagine and try and make it longer every day. Because when I, dude, I mean, when I would play music, 
I go ape shit. I, I'll show you a video after this. Oh, 20. You got 20 bro. minutes set, bro. You're done. If, like, if you're not prepared, you're done by the end of it. So I would go, I had like, and then I had this thing. I had this like, I wore this piece of fur with a black vest, tight ass oh, pants. Was fly. I did makeup all shit. fucking crazy. You know what I mean? That's and tough. like, as soon as the music started, we assaulted the fuck out of the, you know what I mean? Yeah, you're just going and crazy, right? And I hate it. I like to like literally like, like under ten seconds between the songs, and yeah, like yeah, you don't want to wait too long, man. Like, right. of course you want to talk. You might, you might kind of usher. The best the, is yeah. when you come on, destroy, boom, and walk boom. right off. Straight up, man. And My favorite band. There's a band called the Dillinger Escape Plan. All right, I got, I got a, um, they're a metal band. They're like a yeah. mathcore metal band. These okay. guys, back when Dimitri, Dillinger Dimitri, Escape if you're plan. listening, best front man, best vocalist ever. Big shout out. out to Dimitri. I'm, I'm Dimitri uh, out. Calculating Infinity was the album. These guys came on stage, assaulted the fuck out of you. The guy would throw the fucking mic. There's blood, everything. And it was so quick. I got some real metal And then shit. it was off. <laughs> they, Dude, the lights, off. they would do a thing where the lights just fucking yeah. flashed the whole time. And the music was so fast. And, and here's my thing, too. Like, in your face. right? And so the zeitgeist is like that. And so the zeitgeist yeah. is going to be super in your face, right? And and but this is what I've learned from doing so many shows, right? Big and small, yeah. medium sized. Yo, stay, stay, get there on time and stay. Like if you're if you're an upcoming artist watching this, when you perform, you need to stay when you leave and meet the people that was standing in front of you, hopping around for your set and hyping yeah, you up. Yeah, don't be a bitch. Like you know what I mean. Like introduce yourself. Like they're waiting for you to do that. And you know what I mean. And then, yeah. And then, and then you don't always have to. And you know, if time permits, like stay, stay for, to watch another artist perform. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> like, so you know, like, like, I, yeah, I was in this band. The guys that were in the band with me were like bigger, and they were all about like we're gonna show up right before we play, and then we're gonna leave right at the end. Bro, it's and like, I was like, I get it. You you got to be huge. You got to be like damn near like yay level if you're gonna. Dude, do I want to say this though. So like, I was like the representation for this band. Actually, I, I'm not gonna put put this on text, but me and Tex. Tex Mosley, amazing guitar player. He has a band called the Neverland, the Neverland Ranch Davidians. We were in a band called the Black Fuzz. Dude, mm -hmm. did fairly well. You know what I mean? They were in a band called the Hangmen, who were like signed to a record label. These they names were on... are crazy. This is a lit ass name. I'm getting inspiration. Yeah, right dude. Now. So like we freaking like, I mean, dude. And this band was really good. The one I was in, it was really good. We were on KXLU, the radio, played big shows, Long Beach here. Really great band, you know what I mean? But the thing I could not stand is that, like, one of the guys was just so... It was like he couldn't get over the fact that he just had to be that cool guy. And I was like, listen, the, <laughs> the, the scene has changed. So, like, the punk scene is getting smaller. Yeah. The rock and roll scene is getting smaller. So we have to support bigger support we have to bigger support each man. other bigger than we ever did yes man we gotta show up early we gotta help the bands bring in their equipment that don't have you know what i mean like Bro, we gotta help each other yeah transparency is important man because guess what you not you're not like you want to be mysterious cool i get it but listen you're not a mystery anymore because there's something called social media right like they already know what's going on like this guy was a mystery though you know he fucking mean? didn't have any any but social. it's like if you're gonna be a mystery you better have something about you yeah <laughs> that you're trying not to show too much of like i don't know but um at the same time I, I i understand like that whole aesthetic and sometimes i could be like that it is a cool aesthetic dude if it, and it, there's a time and place for but, it but like honestly there there's times when when i am like that yeah. when i am like yo i don't even, like it's lock in season and like you it may look like a mystery right. but like if you're really locked in mentally on some things you come off as a mystery but like at sometimes you have to release all the things that you're creating and holding in. Right. Almost like you gotta pop the pimple, right? Yep. You gotta you gotta you gotta de stress. Like if you're holding in a lot of create creative projects and and uh, you're holding in something that you're not showing the world, it can create frustration, man. And then that's that's another side of it. Like release the shit sides and too. support. It, like yeah. be there for people, you know. Like what you said too, I mean it, it, and it's on both sides it's it's hard for an artist to hold it in you know what i mean yeah and then, dude yeah. it's hard it's when it's hard for them to let it go like but also too when when artists hold in and the fans are you know what i mean you can you can yeah. I, i've seen a lot of artists do it where they hold 
You know what I mean? But, but like, Kanye yeah. literally tries to hold, like, dude. Yeah. I think getting the things out of him is like the hardest. But, but imagine this. Imagine Kanye when he first started. He was, like, if you've seen his documentary, Genius, he was in oh, everyone's yeah. studio talking about, listen to this record. Yeah. Sign this. Or, like, what do you think about it? Like, you think he's doing that now? Hell nah. But understand. He's there. Though. As upcoming artists, do not look at these bigger artists that are already there. And yeah, be like, look I want to be did, like that. Yeah, be like you. Like, you know what I mean? Find what works, but don't take exactly someone else's blueprint because, yo, everyone has a formula, right? But, like, formulas are only formulas because they work. Yep. Right? So, so make sure that you're not kind of conforming into someone else's realm. Be and live in your own realm, right? And develop your own formula. And so, like, yeah, eventually when you get to that point where, you know, and I'm speaking to myself too, man, eventually you're going to get to that point where it's like, I can't give you everything. <laughs> right, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I got this huge, crazy idea I'm sculpting, I can't, or like the momentum is so large, it's not, it's not, I shouldn't give it to you right now. Right. But I understand it. It's like a give and take. Are there any uh, particular cities, venues, or anything that you're like excited to play during this tour? Yeah, man. Um, Definitely, well, my hometown, Tampa, Florida, man. Oh, nice. Yeah, man, I, I'm excited to go back home and, and perform there. And, of course, L.A., it's like my second home, dude. Like, they really show up for me here, and it's it's weird. Like, I, I love it. I love it, man. And, and they accept everything for what it is here. And so L.A. and Tampa, Florida is, is going to be my top two cities that I'm excited to perform at, man. And uh, looking ahead, do you see your music like evolving in the next few years? Um, Always any particular direct, any particular like direction or I'm not, project I'm, I'm you're not eager? Thinking about the direction, I'm not thinking about. Of course, the direction is up. The direction is right. an evolution, but in terms of how, in terms of like the how, I'm right. not thinking about that. I'm thinking about just do right. Focus on what I want and put forth the action. Right, and evolve as a person. And then once I evolve as a person, the music is gonna come along with it. Right. You know what I mean? Personal development is gonna develop everything. Right. So it's like, yeah, whatever happens musically at that time, I'm gonna let that shit happen. <laughs> like if I just wanna just drop some MK.G type shit where I'm just like making folk music and right. really digging into a guitar, I might I might mess around and just learn to play piano for an entire year. You may not ever see me. Yeah, I got a little folk thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I did this folk album. I got. I only released two, I'm, I'm, two I've songs. I've been listening to a lot of folk music, man. Yeah. Um, now I used to be on my music. Game I guess you can't time. even say MKG is a folk art. I don't even know what he is, but it's my right now. He's my favorite artist right now. MKG. Dude, I did that. I like. I literally. I have started like, just yeah. playing the guitar on the album. I wrote like all the music lyrics. So you like, got so like, a folk, Leo. I, I need yeah, to hear this, like, I, I'll play I, it after this. Yeah, I need to hear some inspiration, bro. Because that's so like, yeah. where can where are the tour dates released already? Tour dates are out, man. You can. All right, we're gonna drop them down below. So if you're okay, watching on yeah. YouTube, we'll drop it in, and then where can everyone find you? And you can find me on all socials at Crew Sound Waves. That's all one word. Crew Sound Waves, man. To world, enter the zeitgeist. guys. May first, we going on tour in June. And look, I got something going on with Brandon. And we, we, we're not even going to sneak peek that, but just right. be ready May 1st. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned. All man. right. Thanks for coming out. And like I said, we're going to throw all the links below. If you are still listening, hit that follow button. Hit those likes button. Go over yeah. and follow the Instagrams, everything. Um, and uh, I know some people asked. We are going to add the Trash Can Talk merch back onto the Young that. Gods. I need that too. Yeah, it's actually we have some good merch, and um, but right now, if, if you guys want, just pick up something off YoungGodsMFG.com, and we will add the merch back on there. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks for coming out. Thank you, my man. Thank you, Brandon. Yeah. All right, and we'll see you guys next time.